Hello. Today I'm going to talk about um, a generalization of the derivative called the Freshet derivative. Now, um, the derivative that you learn in Calculus 1 um, is a derivative from of a function from the real numbers to the real numbers, just a single uh, variable, a single real variable. And if you go further on in calculus, you learn about multivariable calculus and partial derivatives, and matrix of partial derivatives, and the gradient, and things like that. Well, uh, the Frechette derivative is a generalization of the derivative uh, that instead of uh, just being something from the real line to the real line, works on any function from a subset of some space to another space where V and W are uh, complete, uh, normed vector spaces. All right. uh, and those are called Banach spaces. Don't worry too much about what that means. It's just very general. Uh, uh, as an aside, what do you call a space that's complete normed, uh, a vector space that's complete normed and yellow? Well, you call it a banana space. Uh, anyway, so if there exists something like this from V to W, and what is this? This is a linear functional. So if there is a, a linear functional like this that uh, takes elements of V onto W and it acts like this, such that, the limit as an element of V approaches zero in the V norm, the V norm, of this ratio and this might start to look familiar minus f of x but this is not going to look familiar such that this limit is zero then um, whatever a x is the way it operates on H uh, is the derivative of F. All right, it's called the Frechette derivative or the Frechette derivative. Let's see if we can uh, use this uh, to get a derivative of something and let's start with our simplest uh, space the real numbers to the real numbers and let's just go with x squared, a good uh, initial example. So um, we're looking at this limit as h approaches 0 of, and in uh, the real numbers, the uh, um, norm is uh, just the absolute value. We don't know what this is. Well, that's take the square x squared plus xh plus h squared minus x squared. Those go away. Minus. Right. At this point, we need to um, say what it means for a to be a linear functional. It means that a having the variable h is going to act linearly on that variable. So it's going to be h times something. Now uh, the something is going to depend on x. x is like a parameter in this case. So um, <clears throat> we know it's going to be a derivative. So f prime of x. All right. Put that as an aside. This limit is the limit as h goes to zero of 
x h sorry that's 2xh uh, plus h squared minus h uh, f prime x over h and we can see that uh, if this f prime of x is 2x all right then we have 2xh minus 2xh uh, is h squared uh, leaves h squared on the top divide that by h the limit goes to zero so uh, f prime of x equals 2x works and that agrees with our uh, general notion of the derivative from uh, cal 1. Now let's apply this to a uh, more complex example say a function from the plane to the plane and let me give you an example let's use a multiplication as the output of the first variable and an addition as the output of the second variable okay so the limit that needs to exist here is now we have a, a point in R2 going towards zero so any path this point takes towards zero uh, the uh, limit of this ratio that I'm going to write out should be zero if the derivative exists or if we have the right linear uh, linear functional okay so this is x plus h times y plus v for our f of x plus h, uh, or f of x or x y plus h v, uh, and the second is x plus h plus y plus v. All right, that's our first uh, ordered pair. That's f of uh, x y plus h v, and now we subtract off um, the ordered pair x y x plus y and then we subtract off our linear functional which will depend on xy and have as its variable hv and take the norm and the norm of the order pair hv which is going to be the square root of h squared plus v squared alright let's uh, set up our linear functional over here what is this I was actually at quite a bit of a loss earlier when I was trying to work this out but we do know since this a uh, appears in an addition of ordered pairs that it's definitely going to be an ordered pair right. now um, these things in here have got to be numbers but each one of them has to depend on this variable so, how do we get out of an ordered pair, what can, what can take an ordered pair and output a single number? Well, I, I tried a couple of things, but this is what I got. Treat the ordered pair as a column matrix. and we get a number out if this is one by two. And so I'm gonna call this, since this is first first, little x, little x, a, uh, and of x and y, but I'm gonna suppress that notation. Uh, x, y, a, here, y, x, a, and here, y, y, a. All right, so we need to figure out what these four things are and they're all functions of x and y. So, what do we get uh, when we simplify this out? The limit, so this point goes towards zero, norm. All right, so we do this addition. We have uh, x, y plus x, v plus h, y, 
plus hv minus xy minus this, which is x, x, a, h plus, so the negative makes it a negative, x, y, a, b. All right, and we have in our second uh, x plus h plus y plus b uh, minus x minus y minus y x a h minus y y a v and I apologize if the uh, uh, video is uh, if you can't see all this um, it'll get a little bit clearer as things simplify and I can write larger okay that's equal to Well, these xy's go away. xy goes away with xy. And we can pull some h's and v's out. I'm going to leave this h times v there outside. So we've got h times v. Now we've got uh, for the h's, hy plus h times y minus little x, little xa. And then plus uh, v times uh, x minus little x little y a. That's our first uh, coordinate. And then x, y goes away up here. And we have the h's 1 minus y, x, a h 1 minus y, x, a, and then plus v, 1 minus y, y, a. And and you can see what our uh, x's, uh, x, y, a's, what our a is supposed to be. So a The x, x, a should be y. The x, y, a should be x. To make this limit go to zero, uh, this should be one, and this should be one. And if you've had some calculus, you'll recognize this as the matrix of partial derivatives. All right, but let's make sure this limit does go to zero. Um, so we have the limit. H b goes to zero of here, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. We have uh, HV and zero. And here is HV. And we can take this norm. And this is simply uh, HV. And this is the square root of H squared plus V squared. Now suppose this is equal to some number, let's call it alpha. We want to show that alpha is zero. Well, the um, square of the limit is equal to the limit of the square, so we can say alpha squared is the limit of h squared v squared over h squared plus v squared. Now we're almost done. hv is going towards zero. So let's suppose that, suppose that h is as big as some beta, which is less than 1, and v is less than or equal to this beta, which is less than 1. Right. Then we have h squared v squared is less than beta to the fourth. And we have h squared plus v squared is greater than beta squared, because h squared is beta squared. So we have h squared v squared over 
h squared plus v squared is less than beta squared. Now, as this beta goes towards zero, beta squared goes towards zero, even faster. So we know that alpha is zero, so we know that alpha is zero. What we've done is basically taken squares that uh, go down towards zero and shown that on each square the uh, this limit is smaller and smaller uh, in some very well-defined sense uh, and so that as we go towards the origin uh, the ratio is going towards zero. So uh, we've got the Frechette derivative for a function from R2 to R2. Not too bad. All right, thank you for watching. Have a good afternoon.